Now we're going to start talking about magnetism. It turns out magnetism is very closely related to many of the things we've just been talking about to do with electric charges, in particular with the motion of electric charge. So closely aligned is magnetism and electricity that the entire subject often gets called electromagnetism. Now you might already have some experience with magnetic forces. You've probably played with magnets. You might even stick things to your refrigerator using magnets. These are examples of what we call permanent magnets, where the material itself has some magnetic properties. This is just one example of the magnetic field, but we'll use it to start with. We can take a couple of magnets and play with them and soon find that there are forces between those magnets, and we can find some, some ideas about that. Our magnet will have two ends to it. It'll have what we call magnetic poles. One of them we call the North Pole, one of them we call the South Pole. And they're a little bit like the positive and negative signs we have for electric charge. After playing around for a while, you'll find that if you put two poles that are the same near each other, they'll repel. So two North Poles will push each other apart. If you put two poles near each other that are the opposite side, they'll attract each other. So a North Pole and a South Pole feel an attractive force. And again, you can see this is already quite similar to what we have with electric charge. Let's look at uh, a magnet now and see what we could think about drawing the force in terms of a magnetic field, the same way that we drew a force for an electric field. We're going to draw it as if a, a North Pole is feeling the force. So if we start here at the North Pole end of our magnet, a North Pole placed there would feel a force directly away from it. And if it was off to one side, it would feel a force that might push it off slightly to one side, as indicated there. Now these field lines move away from the North Pole. If we put a North Pole down near the South Pole end of the magnet, it would feel a force pulling it towards the South Pole. And again, slightly off to one side, we would still get that force pulling a North Pole in that direction. If we looked at these lines going a bit further out, we might actually see they go out and turn around and come back in. That's the direction you would find the force on a North Pole would feel near this bar magnet. And we call the, the magnetic field a symbol B, and we actually measure it in units, and I'll just write it here in Tesla. Although we're not going to be using that unit very much, it's a very large unit. Now we mentioned that magnetic fields come along with a North Pole and a South Pole. What if we just try to get a North Pole by itself? We call that a magnetic monopole. You might think you could just take this bar magnet and chop the North Pole end off and you'd have a North Pole by itself. But in fact, something kind of strange happens. If you chop a bar magnet in half, you get two smaller magnets, both of which have a north and a south pole. In fact, the idea of a magnetic pole is a very intriguing one, and physicists to this day are still unsure whether our universe can actually exist with a magnetic monopole in it. But what about the force of a magnetic field on a charged particle? Well, it turns out if you put a charged particle in a magnetic field and it just sits there, there's no force at all. We see here magnetic field lines pointing off to the right with a positive charge sitting there. And again, if it was just sitting there, there'd be no force at all. To get a force on a charged particle, the charged particle has to move in the magnetic field. In particular, it has to move so that part of its motion crosses the magnetic field lines. Let's imagine our charged particle is moving in this direction with a speed v. Now there will be a force on that charged particle. But what is the direction of the force? Strangely enough, it turns out it's not in the direction that the charge is moving, and it's not in the direction of the magnetic field. It's at right angles to both of those. It's kind of hard to consider. It turns out a really useful way to do this is to use a right-hand rule. And there's some, some uh, guidance here. In your right hand, your fingers point in the direction the magnetic field points. Your thumb points in the direction that a positive charge is moving. And when you hold your hand out like that, the palm of your hand will push in the direction of the force. So let's try with this example right now. I'll turn to a side so I'm facing the same way that you are on the screen. My fingers are now pointing off to the right in the direction of the magnetic field. My thumb is pointing up the direction of the positive charge. And my palm is going to push into the screen. Now it's really important when you do these kinds of force calculations using the right hand rule that you make sure you're using your right hand. It's a common mistake to do it with your left hand and get the force in the completely wrong direction. To that end, let's try something a bit different. Let's put a negative charge in this magnetic field. Now we'll make the negative charge move in the same direction that the positive charge was moving. 
Now, how do you handle a negative charge with your right hand rule? Well, remember, your fingers are still going to point in the direction of the magnetic field. Your thumb points in the direction that a positive charge will move. Well, a negative charge moving in one direction, you'll recall, is the same as a positive charge moving in the opposite direction. What I'd like you to do now is to practice using your right hand rule on this negative charge moving as indicated in the magnetic field. If you get it right, you should show that the force on this charge is going to be out of the screen, towards you. Now in the next topic, we're going to develop things a little bit further, looking more at the forces on charges in magnetic fields and also on current carrying conductors.